The Director General of the Industrial Training Fund, Mr. Joseph Ari, today outlined the agency's plan for the year 2019, and this will include the training of 18,000 youth in vocational and skills acquisition across the 36 states of the Federation. Out of the 18,000 beneficiaries, 300 will be selected from each state to participate in the program. The vocational trainings will cover areas in aquaculture, construction, crop production, and poultry, among others. Figures from the National Bureau of Statistics shows that the number of Nigerians without jobs increased from 17.6 million in the fourth quarter of 2017 to 20.9 million in the third quarter of 2018. How to tackle this challenge headlong is the reason why officials of the Industrial Training Fund have converged here. Through a detailed plan, the Director General of the ITF rules out how it intends to train Nigerian youth through an 11-point policy. The National Industrial Skills Development Program, NISDP, the Women's Skills Empowerment Program, WOSEP, the Air Conditioning and Refrigeration Training on Wheels Program, the Design and Garment Making as well as Training on Wheels for Nigerian youth under the Passion to Profession program P2PP. <clears throat> the Skills Training and Empowerment program for the Physically Challenged, known as STEP-C, the Construction Skills Empowerment program, known as CONCEPT, the Aquaculture Fish Farming program under the Agripreneurship, the Manure Production, the Crop Production Greenhouse Technology, poultry farming, and the training program development on international marketing and test running, all under the sector of agripreneurship. While one of the basic objectives of the program is for job creation for the nation's unemployed youth, the agency is also considering the adoption of a curriculum that will expose young Nigerian to vocational trainings in their early years. The population of Nigeria is growing rapidly and unless we give hands on uh, skills education and development to these growing Nigerians and growing population we may not be able to get to the desired destination. If all go as planned there is no doubt that this initiative will create jobs and income for the nation's team in youth who are presently unemployed as well as address the seeming problem of youth restiveness in most parts of the country. Now, leading envelope customizing company in Nigeria, Faye Limited, has introduced new products, which includes a range of envelopes and letterheads into the market. First class envelopes and letterheads, designed with security centered watermarks, convey style, professionalism, and state of the art production to meet the taste of corporate organizations as well as businessmen and women. The launch of the products in Lagos also gave industry players the opportunity to support Made in Nigeria projects. Players in the manufacturing industry, customers of FAE Limited, as well as media practitioners converge here for the launch of first-class corporate envelope and letterhead paper. These premium products from the staple of the envelope manufacturer will positively change the landscape of envelope production globally. With the launch of these new products, we further establish and relate uh, the reality that we are the number one and the largest envelope manufacturer in Nigeria. Interestingly, some of the components of the production were sourced locally. This ignites confidence in locally made goods. If you want to achieve something, whatever it is, through the process of production in an economy in Nigeria, and you are looking for long-term opportunities, go into Nigerian manufacturing. Prospective customers have a range of choices to make from the six surfaces. It has six different embossing surfaces, which no competitor has ever brought into this country. And apart from that, you have a centered security watermark, 
in first class. Secondly, you also have it in various colors. For example, if your, if your um, company logo is in cream, you have it in cream, in blue, in gray, in orange, in green. I believe that industrialization is the key to economic development, employment generation, and poverty alleviation. We have to congratulate her for having that uh, uh, vision. FAE Limited says its lofty desire and strategic business plan is to see the products go beyond the shores of Nigeria, thus making it a major foreign exchange earner for the economy. The Nigeria Incentive-Based Risk-Sharing System for Agricultural Lending, NERSAL, has signed a Memorandum of Understanding with Ecobank Nigeria on a 70 billion Naira portfolio commitment from the bank to agribusiness projects initiated by NERSAL. At the signing ceremony in Lagos, Southwest Nigeria, the managing director of NERSAL, Mr. Aliyu Abdul Hamid, said the occasion marks the beginning of a collaboration between two institutions who are in support of the development of agriculture and its value chain. Agriculture is being touted as Nigeria's new oil and is fundamental to the country's prosperity and security. Um, once again, best, uh... This is why the Nigeria Incentive-Based Risk-Sharing System for Agricultural Lending, NERSAL, is partnering with Ecobank Nigeria to fund investment schemes in the sector. The MOU signing marks the beginning of a collaboration between NASA and Ecobank on NASA's agribusiness initiatives and the development of products that will support lending to actors in the agricultural value chain in conformity with Ecobank's risk acceptance criteria and internal credit process. Whatever model we are able to succeed in executing and delivering results in Nigeria is replicable in 33 countries in Africa. Supporting agri is good business. Mm -hmm. Our nation has grown over the years largely on the strength of agriculture. Project partners put pen to paper to seal the deal. Fifteen crops are on the list for farmers who will enjoy the dividends of this relationship. Meanwhile, the project financier has concluded plans to invest at least 70 billion naira within the next three years earmarking 15 billion naira as the first tranche. The transactions that we already have are Greek-based transactions that we will work on with NISAL immediately from today is about 15 billion. That's why we call it Series A. With the, the risk in participation of NISAL, it enables us to give those facilities at very low rates, uh, single-digit rates, uh, maximum of 9%. All farmers will be grouped and be structured by NASAL and create governance whereby minimum sizes of, let's say, a ticket coming to Ecobank for farmers will be in the region of between 50 to 75 million naira. NASAL was created by the Central Bank of Nigeria to stimulate the flow of affordable finance and investments into the agricultural value chain. And this agency believes that with Ecobank as the financing partner, the life of farmers just got better. For the rest of the business news, here's Anne Waudu. Thanks a lot, Ijoma. Welcome to business news. The Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation says it is ready to supply 10% of India's crude oil demand in the face of competing demand for the product from other countries around the world. The group managing director of the NNPC, Malachi Ari, made this known today during a visit by the Indian High Commissioner to Nigeria, Abe Takur, to the state oil firm's headquarters in the nation's capital, Abuja. Mr. Kiari, in a statement, explains that Nigeria, through the corporation, will continue to support India's energy security. He further hints that the recent memorandum of understanding on energy between both countries will be concluded to further strengthen the bilateral relations. The Joint Task Board has officially flagged off the new national taxpayer identification number, which is the registration system in the southwestern region of the country. Designed to promote effective data exchange between tax authorities, the new team registration system, which commenced in October 2018, will also reduce the burden on taxpayers. The launch was held at the Civic Center in Victoria Island, Lagos. 
It appears to be a new beginning in the history of tax administration in Nigeria, as the new taxpayer identification number goes live in the southwest geopolitical zone, an initiative of the Joint Tax Board headed by Tunde Fowler. The online process eliminates queuing up at tax offices for registration and helps reduce precious man hours. There are many other benefits as highlighted by the chairman of the Joint Tax Board who used Lagos as an example of how things can be done right. The new system guarantees that each taxpayer's details are readily, readily available to them at their fingertips. Furthermore, the new system also possesses the capacity to integrate with relevant agencies and leverage on already captured data, deploy analytics to discover underlying and correlating trends and patterns that could lead to better visibility and increased internally generated revenue. The Lagos State Governor Babajide Sonwolu does the harness of flagging off the new National Taxpayer Identification Registration System. Thank you very much. And he becomes the first in the region to get his teen certificate. This new Taxpayer Identification Number Registration System demonstrates the transformative power of technology as a significant contributor to the ease of doing business reforms, both at the national level and also at the sub-national level, and more critically, also aligns with our agenda of leveraging technology to drive change across our various economic sectors. The new teen registration system will enable taxpayers access the system from anywhere in the world. All they need is an internet-enabled device. It's certainly not the best of times for the Nigerian stock market as the benchmark index has reached an all-time low due to increased sell pressure in the share price of Seplet and 18 other equities. Let's hear more from Layo Adebuki. Hello and welcome to the Stock Market Report. The NSE's main index finally fell below the 28,000 level down by 0.64% at the close of today's trading session as sell pressure on listed high-value equities continue to weigh on the market's performance. Four of the five key sectors of the exchange also closed negative, particularly the oil and gas counter, which plunged by 4.74%, due mainly to heavy price loss from Steplat and Forte Oil. Traders and analysts attribute the persistent downturn to the delay by government to formulate a cabinet absence of new business-friendly policy and the new lending policy directed by the CBN to deposit money bank on loans to the real sector. Meanwhile, Con Oil tops a list of 12 gainers, up 9.77%. Julius Berger and International Bureaus lead 17 other losers, down 10% each, while FBN Holdings is the highest contributor to a total of 175 million shares traded for Thursday. Well, that's the Stock Market Report. I'm Layo Adegoki. And that's business news tonight. Thank you for watching. I'm Anne Wilder.